What is up guys, Alex here. And today I wanna to talk to you about a few of the negative things about native script development. Not the technical negative stuff, but things that we do in our daily habits with native script development that I found that I've done in the past as well that now I know not to do. And I wanna tell you these things so you can avoid doing them as well. Let's call these bad habits of native script development. And we're gonna discuss that right now. Hey, welcome back. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. You'll support this channel and all the usual tips, tricks, and tutorials that we do here. Now, before I get started with the bad habits, a quick question for you. And you can comment down below and let me know what you think. I do a lot of native script tutorials here, but I've never done comparisons between native script and say Flutter or React Native. And I was thinking the other day, how would a native script developer approach those other frameworks or how would they look at those and do some kind of comparison? I've never actually worked with Flutter and I've never worked with React Native. So would you be interested to see how somebody like me, somebody that's never touched those technologies, would interact with those technologies and give my honest opinion about what I think is better about NativeScript, what I think is better about Flutter or React Native? Is that something you wanna see? Let me know down below. All right, let's get started with the bad habits. Bad habit number one, and it's not really a habit, it's more of a learning thing. So this one is something I get questions about a lot. And people that are learning NativeScript Vue and NativeScript with Angular, they often come to NativeScript and they think they can just directly apply their Vue knowledge or their Angular knowledge directly in NativeScript. And that's not the case. Before there was NativeScript Vue and NativeScript Angular, there was NativeScript Core. So NativeScript is built around a NativeScript Core. It has core modules and core widgets. These are all the widgets like buttons and labels and layouts and text areas. These are all the things that make up the UI of your application. It doesn't matter if you're using Angular, Vue, or Core, you still need to know those core elements. So when you see me creating tutorials using NativeScript Core, it's because I want you to know the basics of how Core works, how those UI elements work in Core. It's very important to know Core, and if you're skipping over that part, you're making a big mistake. The same exact UI elements, like a button, for example, a NativeScript button, you're gonna use that button element in NativeScript Core, in NativeScript Angular, in NativeScript Vue, in NativeScript React, I should say React NativeScript, and Svelte Native it's gonna be the same button, the same element with the same attributes and the same properties. So you need to know that. Same thing goes for the, how the layouts work. You need to know how layouts work and how to arrange them together. And you need to know the basics of that before you start componentizing your UIs as you would with NativeScript Angular, NativeScript Vue, and React. Think of these core widgets as the atomic particles that you're gonna be using to create your UIs. And then components that you build with Angular concepts or with Vue concepts, those Vue and Angular components are gonna be the molecules, but you're still gonna be using those same atoms, the UI elements. And that's why you should learn NativeScript core initially. So speaking of layouts, this brings me to bad habit number two. When you're coming from the web world, we're so used to very powerful machines and powerful browsers that sometimes we create these nested layouts and these really deep view hierarchies. And we glance over performance because the browser can handle it. But when it comes to native mobile applications, you have to be very careful here. The more nesting you do with your layouts, the more calculations will have to happen. And this is especially important if you're gonna be doing any sorts of animations. So try and keep your layouts as flat as possible. I used to go layout happy. And if I needed to do some kind of a horizontal layout with a vertical layout inside of it and horizontal layouts inside of that, I would use stack layout inside of stack layout instead of another stack layout. And I would go crazy with that because it's so easy to use that, right? You just use a stack layout and it automatically lines things up for you. But because you're using nested layouts in that way, you're gonna pay the price and it's gonna cost performance. And think about it this way. You might have a really nice new shiny iPhone or a Pixel 3 or a Pixel 4 Android device, but not everybody that's gonna be using your app has that. Some people may be using old Android devices and if you have so much layout calculation to do, it's just gonna be really laggy and janky on their devices. So keep layouts as flat as possible. Moving on to number three, 
I've done this before, and a lot of the examples that you see online with native script applications do this, unfortunately, but they're just demos. And what I'm talking about is keeping your business logic inside your view models or inside your UI layer. This is a huge no-no as far as architecture goes. And I go really deeply into architecture and how to separate out your different layers in the NativeScript Pro courses on nativescripting.com. Now with NativeScript Angular, Angular kind of handles this for you because they have the separation of components and services. They have the concept of services uh, that kind of make you abstract away your business logic into services. Even though you can still screw that up and still have your business logic inside your components, don't do that. Now with NativeScript View, React NativeScript, and NativeScript Core, you can put your business logic anywhere. There is no predefined formula for keeping your business logic inside of services, inside a core layer, for example. It's up to you, the developer or the architect of the application to make sure that happens. Separate out your business logic into a separate layer and do not put that stuff inside of your views or view models. Think about it this way. The view should talk to only the UI stuff. It should be dumb. It should, be, it should only respond to user interactions and only display stuff that's coming from the back end. That's it. Don't make it do extra work. When you properly separate out your architecture this way, your app becomes so much more extensible and easy to maintain and a whole world opens up. It's just going to be so much better, especially if you're working on a team. Now, habit number four is related to number three, and that has to do with not sharing code. So when you abstract away your business logic into a separate layer, you can reuse that code. So if you're writing in a web application and you're writing a mobile application, they might have different UI layers, but the business logic code is gonna be the same, possibly, or at least some of the business logic code is gonna be shared. That's gonna be depending on your application. However, rewriting that business logic again and copying and pasting it is silly, right? Why not just share that code? In fact, there are a couple of different code sharing solutions that are available. Xplat is one of them. This will allow you to share your core libraries business logic with a NativeScript app, other mobile apps, and web apps. So think about your main core of your application as a separate piece that can be shared with different front ends. All right, number five is picking the wrong UI framework. What does that mean, wrong UI framework? What is a wrong UI framework? What if I pick Angular, is that wrong? What if I pick Vue, is that wrong? Well, no, there is no wrong UI framework, but there might be a wrong UI framework for you. For example, if your team has Angular skills and you know Angular and you're gonna pick NativeScript Vue as your mobile framework, then that's gonna cause some problems. I'm not saying it's not gonna work. It's gonna work just fine, but you're gonna duplicate effort and you're not gonna have the skill set to be able to quickly pick up and create the application that you need in a timely manner. So yes, it's possible. And really there's no such thing as picking the wrong framework, but think about it in terms of cost in time and money and how much you're going to invest in learning a new framework versus sticking to what you already know. So if you're used to JavaScript applications on the web, then I'd suggest just doing native script core, either with TypeScript or with plain JavaScript. I always recommend TypeScript because it's gonna be more maintainable. But again, if your team doesn't have TypeScript knowledge, I would suggest learning it. <laughs> but if you don't have time for that, then you can always use native script with plain JavaScript. It's gonna work just fine. If your team already has React knowledge and you have React web applications, then learning NativeScript Angular is going to be a little bit uh, going against the grain. Or learning NativeScript Vue is going to be going against the grain for you that's a React-based team. In that case, learn React NativeScript. But always keep in mind point number one that I made, which is you still need to learn the core elements of NativeScript, the core widgets. And then the UI framework is just built on top of that. All right, moving on to number six, and this is truly a bad habit that I've seen out there. So in NativeScript, you can write a single code base in JavaScript for both iOS and Android, but there are differences that you can create based on the platform that you're using. So for example, if you wanna execute a special section of code for iOS and a separate section for Android, you can do that. And you can do that just by examining the platform in your running code. There's a platform module that NativeScript provides out of the box and it has uh, booleans set on it. Is iOS or is Android? We do this quite a lot in the tutorials here for little segments of code. But the bad habit is using this a lot and overusing this and keeping large sections of code that are just 
essentially just gigantic if statements. So if iOS and then execute this giant bundle of code and if Android execute another giant bundle of code and that code lives in the same file in the same module, that's a bad habit. There's much better ways of separating out your platform specific code in native script. And I even have a whole series of videos on how to do that right here on this channel. And I show you how to do JavaScript classes, how to separate them out based on the platform. I show you how to do functions based on the platform and I show you how to do separate files. NativeScript out of the box supports conventions that you can use to specify whether you're executing on iOS or on Android. And I show you different techniques for this in that video series. I'll link to it down below. Even CSS can be split up into platform specific. All right, bad habit number seven is not testing frequently on both iOS and Android. So I've done this in the past many times before where I would develop almost the entire application for iOS because I'm using Macs most of the time and I would develop on an iOS device on iOS simulator most of the time. And I would only check Android like at the end of a big feature or at the end of the project. And that's just not good because I would get a big surprise at the end. Yes, it is a cross-platform framework, and yes, a lot of the core modules work the same way on both iOS and Android, but you're gonna have styling differences in iOS and Android, and surprising ones too. A lot of these I talk about in the videos on this channel. There are a few little quirks here and there that will get you, and you're gonna be kicking yourself at the end if you don't check it periodically as you're developing on both iOS and Android. Now, what's even better than checking on iOS and Android simulators? Using hardware devices to check on, because then you'll get the actual feel for your application. You'll be able to interact with it physically, not just with your mouse clicks. So you make sure you check on both iOS and Android and do so as you're developing, not at the end. Finally, bad habit number eight is if you ask a question on Stack Overflow, or in the native script community. And if somebody spends their time and invests the time to answer you and they provide a good answer, and it's one that actually works and helps you out, it would be really kind of you to go back and mark that as the answer that solved your problem. Maybe leave a comment saying that it solved your problem or if there's some changes that you had to apply in order for your problem to be fixed. Jot that down, it doesn't take that long, especially given that somebody actually spend their time answering your question. All right, folks, thanks for joining me today. Subscribe to this channel and I will see you in the next video. Happy native scripting.